Have you ever heard of the uh, <laughs> Clone Wars micro series back from 2003? I think it was. Anyway, uh, that show was able to stitch together a little. With gosh, were they two minute or thirty? No, they were like two minute uh, bits of story uh, into one cohesive overall story, and you had people on different planets doing different things. This actually reminds me of that a little bit. Um, I think overall the. Well, my familiarity with the Clone Wars and, uh, you know, the Star, or rather with the Star Wars characters made it a lot easier for me to follow uh, along with what was happening in that story. Um, but I find, uh, I'm finding that I can start to feel out the overall uh, narrative and, and the connections between all the characters here, um, which is really good. Uh, I, but I, I wonder how much of that has to do with me as a, as a viewer versus um not being a viewer I, I, I don't know how to I, I guess me as a as a content consumer versus how well uh Super Riot Productions put this together because they really are just throwing you in and you have to you have to figure it out uh, as you go along which is okay um I don't mind being uh you know initiated in that way um I thought the uh the Eltigar guy um you know he wants to spread fear to every, you know, parallel world. Like, I was wondering, are they talking about dimensions, parallel worlds? Or uh, is he just talking about planets? Because uh, I really still don't understand the way all the villains act in Ultraman, except for, you know, they get giant and, and fight and destroy stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, I thought Eltigar in uh, Red and Blue, or Rosso and Blue, had a really great fight. Uh, I didn't know that those guys had, like, a form change thing. Uh, Rosso gets, uh, like a wind power and Blue gets, a uh, earth power. So are they like earth, wind, fire, and water? Uh, and if they are, since Grigio is their sister, um, what elemental powers does she have? Does she have none? Does she have all four? Uh, she, she got plasma. Um, you know, I mean, I guess she could have like electricity, light, darkness, different things like that. So that would be interesting to see. Um, we had a little more of Ultraman reboot and I don't remember if he used his shield in the last episode. Uh, but I liked seeing his shield. That was very cool. Uh, I like that his accessory, his little, what I had assumed was just his transformation device turned into that. Um, and then it's weird. He has this other power where he like makes a net around the enemy. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I think I would rather him like, it looks like it just came out of his chest or his hand or something. Uh, and I think I would have preferred that to have come out of his shield. Um, I think that would have been cooler. Uh, but overall, you know, it was neat, uh, and it gave them a chance to escape, and I can't remember if it was, uh, Eltigar, which I think is the, the name of the gold guy with the big crazy shoulder pads, uh, or if it was the, uh, the other guy, the, the guy who was fighting Geed and, uh, X, um, but, yeah, like, when they escape, I think he says darn in the dub, which is cool, I'm not into, um, uh, not really into the cussing in tokusatsu, uh, because it's, you know, children's media, um, but, uh, it just struck me as funny, like, oh, darn, because Super Riot is probably like, hey, this is for kids, let's not, you know, translate that in a really nasty, negative way, because he could have said anything. I don't know what he said, to say Kisama? I don't know. Um, which, anyway, they say that on Kamen Rider, so I can say it here. Uh, and then, uh, the guy who Ginga shows up to save, uh, X and Jeed from, uh, that guy reminds me of, uh... Alexis Carib from SSSS.Gridman, um, like the way his head is, the, all the black on him, uh, and I, I think Alexis Carib is supposed to be, uh, sourced, or, like, some of the design for him, uh, is sourced from an older, uh, villain, um, kind of like how, I, I guess, Bemular is a character who keeps popping up in Ultraman in different places, um, and the Baltans, too, uh, I don't have a problem with the series reusing, uh, you know, any of the designs. I mean, if they're races of peoples, then it would make sense that, you know, they might pop up here and there in different types of roles uh, as you're telling stories in the same, you know, ongoing connected universe. Um, and I think, well, I wonder just how connected the universe of the Ultras is supposed to be. Like, has it from the beginning always been one cohesive, consistent universe? Uh, I get that feeling, and I definitely feel like in these specials they are, um, but it, it all gels for me, uh, I think they all come from 
you know, uni what is it? Universe or Star M78, and it's the Land of Light and stuff where they live from. Um... So, I don't know. Very interesting. Uh, I'm still feeling the vibe. The fights were really good. I guess, dumb that I didn't mention that. Uh, but I really enjoyed the fights. Uh, there's, like, some good variations. Some fights are very... Some of these Ultra and Kaiju fights are very lumbering and slow. Um, or they're all kind of lumbering and slow. But some of them, you can tell, they're supposed to be faster, uh, more dynamic, and the action is different in them. So that's in been enjoyable to see. Alrighty. Well, it's time for me to wrap it up. Going Ultra can be found on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and mjmunoz.com slash gu. I'm an aspiring author who will gladly accept your financial support through coffee. You can also check out my Redbubble store. Check out mjmunoz.com for more of my work, where you can find another writer cast, King of Hearts, Queen of Sorrows, MJ Loves Toku, uh, where I'm covering, or, and MJ Loves Toku, where I'm covering uh, Commander 01 every week. Relevant links are in the show notes. If you had a good time, like and share and leave a comment. Subscribe and ring that bell to keep up with me as I explore more Ultraman.